Hello, everyone. This is Jill. Welcome to the podcast. Are you faced with fear or do you have a problem getting started doing the things you want to do because there's something out there that's frightening to you? Overcoming that is the important part of moving on with your life. And that's what we'll talk about today. Each of us must confront our own fears. We must come face to face with them. How we handle our fears will determine where we go the rest of our lives. To experience adventure or be limited by the fear of it. Judy Bloom. When it comes to fear, there are so many things that are hard to overcome. Because it's such a visceral part of our existence, fear is meant to keep us safe. It's meant to keep us with the village when going out into the forest might be dangerous to us. It is meant to be something that protects us. But all too often, our overreaction to fear or our analysis of what we're afraid of holds us back, keeps us where we're at. So today we're going to talk about how we can overcome things that frighten us and what we can do to move on and step forward in our lives. Once we learn how to do this, then everything else becomes easier. The first thing you want to do are the easy things when it comes to fear. Is it something that's just temporarily scaring you? Something that's just making you stressed out? just for a few moments. And if that's the case, it just may be that getting away from it from a little bit may help you overcome that fear. Maybe you watch something funny on YouTube. Maybe you go for a walk and talk with a friend and have a few laughs. Maybe that's the kind of thing that's a quick help that will help you get over your fears. Sometimes it's a little bit more serious, however. For example, if you're afraid of something, but you're not sure if you're just taking it too seriously, Talk to a friend, see what they say about it. Sometimes they can give you a perspective that will help you overcome those fears. Sometimes just doing any activity, making progress in anything can help you overcome your fear. For whatever reason, after the pandemic, I found myself afraid to go out biking and hiking by myself in the woods when I had never been afraid to do that. So sometimes if you can just get yourself there and start walking around, just walking around the trailhead, Maybe then you take a few steps down the trailhead a little bit, but sometimes just taking any initial small step overcome the thing that is frightening to you. Sometimes too, the brain runs away with us. It starts getting freaked out. It's going 10 miles down the road. What if I go for this hike and I come across a bear? And if I come across the bear, I'll get hurt and I won't be able to, you know, the whole thing just goes down this path. And if you can just take a moment to just bring yourself back, what's the reality that you're probably going to see a bear on this trail? Where I live, we don't have bears. So it would be something that would be hard to believe that you would fall into that. So if you just realize what are the probable chances of it happening, relax a little bit, focus a little bit, do some deep breathing, it may help you in overcoming that initial fear. But then you might think, but maybe you do live in an area with bears or something else that's a threat to you. Maybe it's a reasonable threat that you're responding to. Check out the facts of your thoughts. Is it realistic? Is it something you really have to worry about? Are you just coming up with excuses not to do the thing that you really want to do? And if that's the case, if you can overcome it with some simple facts, that might help you get going on something that you're really afraid to do. Another step that you could do is reframing exactly what it is you're afraid of. Sometimes when our body has this visceral reaction to something that maybe we're afraid to do, and maybe it's like you're going to go for a hike in the woods, and just like me, I'm a little bit nervous about it right now. I haven't done it for a while. The body is interesting because when your heart is racing and your nerves are going, the brain can give a number of explanations about what's going on. No, I'm not panicking about going on this hike. I'm excited. That's why my heart is elevated. And that's why I'm a little bit antsy about it. And sometimes just by reframing something that you identify as panic and turn it into excitement, challenge, anticipation. That will tell your brain a new story that you're not actually afraid. And sometimes that's enough to get you over that hurdle so that you can go on and do the thing that you want to do. So first of all, you have to know that it's important that whenever you're afraid to do anything, it's good for you to actually take on those things and do them. Sometimes taking on those fears in our lives are the only way that we can move ahead. It's the only way that we can make our lives better in the long run. For example, if you have a job that you really love and you're afraid to go get a new job, or maybe you even have a job you don't like, but the idea of going out and getting a resume and getting nice dress clothes and doing job interviews 
frightens you. You're scared to do that. And you don't really feel like you want to do that. But the only way for your life to make any progress at all is to actually do that. So if you can come up with strategies that will help you overcome your fear, it'll take you to the next great thing in your life. And it will help you get over fears that you will have in the future. Once you see that you're able to overcome your fear, successfully tackle that thing, then the next time you're afraid of something, you'll be more willing and more able to go ahead and get those things. And it'll help you unlearn some of those patterns that you learned that this is scary. This is terrible. I had a terrible job for a really long time, almost a decade. And it wasn't terrible all the time. That was the problem. Sometimes it was okay. But at one point, my friends demanded I leave that job. It was too much. One day, they just came to my office and said, you're done here. They packed up my office. They took everything in my office. I didn't have a pen. I didn't have a mug. I didn't even have a pair of headphones to listen to anything anymore. They took everything. And my friend saying, you're done here, was it. I had been afraid to go get another job. And you know what? Within two weeks, I had another job. It's a job I have today, which I really love. So even if something is scary for you, once you get over that, you realize it's not as bad as you thought it was. And because my friends helped me and I did take that next step, I have unlocked goals in my life I never expected I would be able to do. It was a complete change in the outcome of my life. And so it's really important that you go after those things you're afraid of. But one thing to do is to, first of all, acknowledge that sometimes fear looks a little bit different. Sometimes fear looks like buying a new gaming console. You get the gaming console so that you can plunge yourself into the game so you don't actually have to address the things in your life that are holding you back. I'm not afraid. I'm just playing a video game. You know what? Video games are fun. They're a lot of fun. But if they are causing you to not go after the things that you need to go in your life, it could be a way you are hiding an actual fear, which means by covering it up with video games, you're not addressing it. And it may not be video games. It could be anything. Oh, I'm, I'm working in my house right now. I'm remodeling my backyard. I'm reading this really great book. And the book will tell me how I can get a new job. That thing is not actually moving you forward. It's masking your ability to overcome this fear. So the very first step is to just acknowledge what it is you're afraid of. What is making you frightened? What's the worst thing that could happen? That job I was in that really was leading my life down a bad path, I was afraid to go get a job. I had, for the first time in my life, a lot of comfort because it paid pretty well. And so I didn't want to mess up something I had already achieved in my life by going after something I didn't have. Bird in the hand were two in the bush, if you've heard that old phrase. A lot of fear was, what if I couldn't get another job? What if no one liked me? Those types of fears were holding me back. And so what you really need to do is, first of all, identify what the fear is, identify what your goals are, list what the best thing is going to happen if you actually get your goal. I'll have a new job. I'll be happier. I'll grow in my life. And then list out what the worst thing could happen is. You go and try to interview for a job and they don't like you or you're doing something else that's very scary to you. But what's the worst thing that could happen? To be honest, in most cases, unless you're doing something very belligerent and something that will ruin relationships for you, the worst thing that would happen is you would take it back, you would look at what went wrong, and then you would try another strategy the next time you go out. Let's say you do go on another job interview and it doesn't go well. It really fails. The people didn't like you. They never called you back. Now you have some piece of evidence, some things that you can look at to determine what went right and what went wrong. And from that point on, then you can move your life forward. Once you've decided that you're going to take on the thing that frightens you the most, then you have to ask yourself the question, how can I pack for this journey? Imagine it's an adventurous trip. What do you need to do in order to get set for it? I've been using the example of getting a new job. So when I left my last company, what were things I had to do? First, I had to create a resume. That was actually really hard for me to sit there and take what I actually did as a system administrator and turn it into actual life skills, I found that difficult. And it also made me promise myself that I would never leave a resume undone for decades again. 
that I'd always update it in little tiny bits. So the next time, if it ever happens, I needed it again, I would have it mostly done. Because if that's your number one fear, you can overcome that fear a decade ago and make sure that it never strikes you again. You'll have to review job questions that you may get in an interview. But how can you prepare yourself so that job interview goes as smoothly as possible? Right now, we're having a lot of interviews via remote meetings. Could you work on your lighting a little bit? Could you get a better camera? Could you find a better angle to take a video meeting in? And then the last step is trying to determine, how did I overcome fear in the past? What helped me do things when I was afraid to do them? Maybe when you were a kid, you joined a softball team and you were afraid about what was going to happen. Maybe you weren't going to make the tryouts. Maybe this wasn't going to work. Maybe people were going to laugh at you, but you did it. And how did you go through those steps of getting yourself to do something you were afraid to do? Try to work on those same steps again. Now you want to make sure that you come up with some sort of a plan. What is it that you can do to break this ominous task to yourself into tiny steps? How can you identify those little tiny steps that you can do so this whole frightening process to you becomes less frightening because it's a tiny step? You're not doing this big, scary thing to get a job, which you're frightened of. Today, I'm just going to write down a list of all the things that I did on my last job, all the tasks I had. Maybe in a couple of days, I'll turn those into statements of skills so that I can put them on my resume. Then a couple of days later, maybe I'll assemble my resume. And then next weekend, I'll put the whole thing together, run it through a grammar software piece and make sure that it looks good. But take it slowly by bringing them into those tiny steps you identified before and then coming up with a plan of how you're going to do this, this will help you to make this much easier to overcome. And then you need to take an assessment of what tools you have in place right now. Maybe you already have dress clothes. You have a suit. You bought one for your brother's wedding two years ago. Maybe you just need a new tie to update it a little bit, but you're already partially there. And I think you have to remember too that this is hard. And so what you need to do is learn from your past mistakes. If you're trying something that's difficult, you're never going to get everything right the first time you try it. If you can remember to learn through it, this will get less frightening for you because now it's a learning process instead of something that's really scary for yourself. The next part is, is that I think you have to pat yourself on the back. Buy yourself a donut. Do whatever it is that rewards you When you have done even the tiniest step, if doing something is scary to you and you take that first small step towards going around your fear and actually accomplishing it, do something nice for yourself. Not something that's going to break the bank, not something that's going to break your diet, just a little thing so that you can celebrate exactly what it is that went right. And one thing to realize about anything that you're afraid of is realize that A lot of people are doing what it is that you're trying to do. When I see people fly, I looked up how many people in the world fly on a daily basis. And then I thought, how many times do I hear something bad happens? It wasn't very often. Or if you think about it in terms of looking for a job, how many times on a daily basis does someone go and look for a new job? If you look at the employment figures and it says, or 1.2 million people changed jobs last month just in the United States, you realize that 1.2 million people had an interview, put themselves out there, and got a job. People do it all the time, and you can do it all the time. Try to ease your fear by just knowing that you are in a big community of people who also got jobs like you want to. You're not alone. You're in a big world full of people getting jobs. Summary, try to analyze what it is you're afraid of. Should it be giving you this much fear? Talk to a friend. See if they can help you gain perspective. Try to do some anxiety relieving activities like deep breathing to try to move away the thoughts that are causing you to have problems. Two, try to relabel your fear as excitement, anticipation. I'm not afraid. I'm just really excited about this. And then just start doing some tiny bit of activity That'll help you feel better about what you're doing. Three, identify exactly what it is you're afraid of. What do you think the best case scenario is if everything goes right or what the worst case scenario is? Then try to imagine 
what it is you think is going to go wrong and how can you overcome it by planning ahead. Think of some strategies that will help you achieve your goal instead of falling into whatever pit you're thinking is going to happen and cause you this amount of pain. Four, prepare yourself. Create a plan of all the things that you need to do in order to get your goals. Look at what you can do to prepare yourself. Is that building a resume? Is that buying a plane ticket? Is that getting a microphone so you can start your own podcast? Start to prepare for your plan that you created to overcome your fear. Get all the right tools in place, all the necessary pieces in place. Figure out what you already have and what you have to get in order to make your plan come true. Take the first step and just make everything so small you couldn't possibly be afraid of it. Five, realize that you're just going to have to learn and continue to do better if things don't go the way that you hope that they would. Figure out what it is that went right, what went wrong, and how you can do better the next time. The best way you can overcome fear is by taking these little steps, seeing that it wasn't catastrophic, learn through the process, and then take the next step again. And then once you've had some success, whether it's just the fact that you did something or you got your new job, you got what you wanted, you got over your fear, whatever it was, celebrate. Give yourself a treat that will really certify that you achieved your goal. You overcame your fear and think about how you did it, what it was that it took so that the next time you have a fear, you have a new plan. Six, just remember, everybody's afraid, but a lot of people are doing what you're doing too. So try to take this and analyze it and realize fear is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it makes us try harder, do a little bit better, and take that fear and turn it towards your advantage. Challenge. Make a list of the thing that you fear most doing that would have the greatest impact in your life. Write down what it is you're actually afraid of. What's the worst thing that could happen? Then write down what the best thing that could happen would be if you took this on. Try to make an analysis if it's worth overcoming your fear. Then decide what your assets are. What would you need to do in order to get your goal? And what do you have already? And now for our fun entertainment quote of the week. This one comes from Will Smith in After Earth. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. That is near insanity, Katar. Now do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. We are all telling ourselves a story. I don't know. I think it's really good advice generally, but if I had Will Smith talking to me with the deep, scary voice and the entire planet was overrun with scary monkeys, I, I probably would be pretty afraid. And that would even be too big for me to reframe, overcome my fears and take on angry monkeys. That's just a bridge too far. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Have a great week.